7 now. We're off to Miami f- to uh, chat with Jeff Dudas at UnderwaterTimes.com. All the top stories there. Good morning, Jeff. Hey, how you doing, Wamo? Good. Thank you very much. First up, um, the story of a rare golden snapper. Yeah, it's uh, I, and never uh, failed to be amazed on how much a single fish can be sold for. Another story like this. This is a, a Chinese businessman has bought a fish, a rare golden snapper, for thirty-eight thousand uh, dollars from uh, this Bangladesh uh, fishing port. Um, it works out. You think that's a lot of money? It, wor- it works out to about a thousand dollars a kilogram. Uh, there, there was a story earlier in the year. I, I remember there was a bluefin t- tuna. Yeah. Sold for three hundred and uh, I'm sorry, seven hundred and thirty-six thousand dollars. That was about twelve hundred a kilogram. So wow. Yeah, it's still in the range, but uh, you know it's, it's crazy. Um, this guy who bought it said he bought it for its uh, tasty bladder and succulent uh, flesh. Right. So. Okay, whatever you're into, I suppose. Is it rare because um, because it's been fished out, or is it just a um, uh, uh, like like a uh, just a rare color that does doesn't happen too often? Evidently, it's just a color. They, okay. they say uh, this this you know they're typically uh, snappers, uh, I believe, are, are, are red or silver. This one's yellow, and evidently in this area, there's only about three or four of these golden ones caught a caught a year at this port. So mm. it's just. I, you know, I don't know if it's a genetic uh, deal or what, but just this color, and uh, you know, there you go. It sells for. Uh, you th- yeah. Would you think thirty-eight thousand dollars you'd pay for a, 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 at least an alive rear golden snapper, not a dead one? Oh well, yeah, you would hope so, but uh, you know, mm. it's uh, you know, I guess for the succulent flesh, uh, you know. Got to, got to pay the money. Mm. Well, soon we won't, of course, be pulling any snapper out of the ocean. Perhaps some jellyfish, maybe even robot jellyfish, Jeff. Yeah, this is a, a, a world first, a uh, self-propelled uh, artificial jellyfish. And this was developed by scientists. Um, they, they had this special metal. Um, it's called a shape, al- a shape metal alloy, which when you scrunch it up, it returns to its, sh- its original shape. And on top of that, they, they put on this platinum black powder, which uh, reacts with oxygen and hydrogen, uh, which, of course, you know, are very abundant in the ocean. So mm. sort of when you put the two together, uh, the, the metal heats up and, and contracts, and then uh, this metal springs back to shape, and it propels the jellyfish along. So, you know, no artificial, you know, sort of batteries or, uh, you know, uh, power source. Wow. It uh, goes on its own. And uh, so it, what, what, is this developed by the military? <laughs> yeah, I think it was, yeah, it's a U.S. Navy-backed research product, huh. you know, project. It's one of these sort of high-tech, high, high tech advanced projects to see, I, I guess, if you can you know, develop self-propelled uh, uh, vehicles, underwater vehicles, and this is sort of the first step. There, There is a limitation for this one, and, of course, you know, there's always something else, but since all the metal that contracts at the same time and releases at the same time, it only goes in one direction... <laughs> So they, have, they haven't figured out how to sort of steer it yet. That could be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, baby steps. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And finally, um, uh, this happened a couple of weeks ago, didn't it? But I'm quite keen to find out more about this. The Coast Guard fired a cannon on a, um, a Japanese uh, old, old vessel that um, had come over on, on the, the tsunami junk wave. Yeah, and this is, uh, you know, these stories keep on popping up as sort of the, the, the debris field from, you know, the Japanese uh, tsunami a year ago. I think it was uh, March of uh, 2011 is now making its way all the way over to the United States. Some of the debris has already hit, hit Alaska. And so this ship sort of showed up one day, and it was a ghost ship, and it was from uh, the, the from Japan. It was the, the 164-foot, uh, you know, shipping vessel that was on its way to be uh, demolished in Hokkaido in Japan. And, you know, the tsunami hit, it washed it out, and it made it over to Alaska, and they were sort of fretting what to do with it. And uh, so they decided to sink it uh, rather than risk, uh, you know, hitting uh, land or such. And uh, sure enough, that's what they did. They fired a bunch of shells into it and uh, sank it. So. Well, what puzzles me is that they... You know, use cannon fire as opposed to you know, getting on board, planting some explosives, or perhaps getting a, um, a tugboat to just bring it in. Well, yeah, that, that was sort of the story went on for a few days. Or the, a guy was going to go out and salvage it, but I think they thought it was too risky and they really didn't know what they were getting into. 
And uh, so I, I think the safest thing they said to do, we'll just fire on it and uh, sink it. And so that's that's what they ended up doing. I just really got to wonder what's risky about grabbing a tow rope, <laughs> chucking it on the back and towing it in. You know, I just I, yeah, I don't know. I guess you know maybe liability or something. But uh, right. I guess no questions asked. You sink it uh, in fifteen or a thousand feet of water. You know, it's, you know mm. it, it's over with. There was cause some concern about um, oil on board, though, wasn't there? Yeah, that's what they, that was one of the questions. They they thought it might have some diesel on it. They weren't real sure. And, you know, this was sort of a derelict vessel to begin with. So I guess, you know, going down into the, to the bottom of the vessel is probably, you know, it was just floating around. Uh, you know, nobody wanted to risk that also. So, uh, you, know, it's, you know, sort of damned if you do, damned if you don't, I guess. And so it's anyone's guess of what's going to turn up next on that tsunami junk wave? Well, all, yeah, all sort of crazy stuff. I mean, they had some fishing buoys showed up, and, you know, all this, you know, the patch, this, this giant tsunami patch, uh, you know, it's, it's, it'll, it'll be washing up here in the States, uh, you know, over the next uh, several months. So mm. we'll it, it does demonstrate to people, though, how interconnected um, the, you know, the, the, the countries are via these currents, right? These, yeah, these massive currents, I don't think, you know, people realize, you know, there's, there's the old story of dropping a bottle in the water and it shows up. Uh, well, you know, here, here's, here, here's a big example of that. Uh, you yeah. drop off a ship yeah. and, uh, you know, shows up halfway around the world. Spooky stuff. Anyway, thanks very much, Jeff. Hey, thanks for having me. Jeff Dudas is at UnderwaterTimes.com where you'll find those stories and a whole lot more as well. It's